So the reason that we saved relationships in our models as one of the last things here to define within our models is because they kind of work differently from the remainder of the columns that we've defined. So far, we've defined everything that actually exists within our database. We All of these are valid columns. If we were to go look within our database, they have column representations there. The actual relationship definitions, though, are going to serve as more of a virtual definition, and they have lookups that look up to the particular IDs that define those relationships. And the way that we define these varies slightly depending on what particular relationship type it is. So we have one to one, one to many, many to one, and then many to many. Within our existing schema over here on the right hand side, I do have those to find out within a key down at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and expand this out. So on the lines pointing to the specific relationship definitions, I've marked it as one to one for one to one, one to m for one to many, m to one for many to one, and then m to m for many to many. Now the difference between one to many and many to one differs depending on what side of the relationship you're looking on. So I've pointed all of these in the same direction so that all of our one to many and many to one are defined as the same. So here you can see we have a role ID pointing to our roles table from our users table. That's defined as m to one as many to one instead of one to many. Whereas if we were to go the other way, then that would become a one to many. So in terms of those two, it's just depending on what side of the relationship you're starting from and pointing to. Similar to how I have this key noting out the different relationship types here, we also need to do the exact same thing within our model to tell a Adonis what type of relationship it is that we're working with so that they know how to look it up accordingly. So let's go ahead and collapse this down. And just like with the actual columns, how it's differed from camel case to snake case, there are specific lookups that Adonis is going to look for as the default naming convention. Within our profile column here, we have this user ID. Now, the way Adonis is going to look this user ID relationship up by default whenever we actually define this relationship is it's going to take the relationship model name and then it's going to take the primary key for that model and snake case it together so it's going to be user underscore ID that it would look for because the user model is the model that that column is relating to and ID is the primary key. So here we have a match with the actual default naming convention for Adonis. So the way that we would define this is if we look over at our key, this is a one-to-one -one relationship. Our users are always going to have one profile and our profiles are always going to belong to one user. So in terms of our lucid models, we're going to want to define both sides of those relationships so that we have both sides to work with. You can define just one side if you know that there's one side you're never going to work with, um, but I prefer to define both because you never know when it might come in handy later down the road. And the way that we define these relationships, just like with all of our column definitions, is via decorators. So there's a different decorator per relationship type that we have within our model. And a really great spot to find all of the different decorators for the relationships is within the documentation. If you go under references to database, scroll down on the left hand side, you'll see relationships here. And you'll see has one, has many, belongs to, many to many, and then has many through. Now we're not going to be focusing on has many through quite yet. We'll save that for a later point in time. But with our specific schema, we do have a relationship for each one of these four, has one, has many, belongs to, and many to many. Which one to use here in your particular use case can be kind of confusing for people, especially if you're not used to the terminology here. The easiest way to remember it here, if we dive back into to our profile. If the column actually exists on the model, in most cases, that will be a belongs to because our profile belongs to the specific user ID. So we can define this within this model here by doing at belongs to, and then we provide in the actual model that this is related to. So we do this as a callback function. Let's import our user model here. Then just like all of our other columns here, we wanna do public, give this relationship a name. We can do user. And then the type for this is going to be belongs to, let's open this up, type of, and then the user. So if I scroll up just a little bit here, you can see we have our user ID on our profile model. Now we also have a user relationship, which serves as kind of a re virtual representation of what the actual user is. So within our profile model, we already have everything done. This is our perfectly valid relationship definition. All that we need to do from here is query and work with it. Um, but we do wanna go on the inverse side of this relationship on our user and also define it there because we don't know whether or not we need to populate the profile from the user side or from the profile side. So we want it to be available from both sides so that we can work with it either way. So let's jump over to our user model, scroll down. Since there's no profile ID on the actual model here, this isn't going to be a belongs to, it's going to be a has one because a user has one profile. So we could do at has one, provide this a callback of type profile, and this will point the actual relationship to our profile model, do public profile, and then we want to define the type here as has one type of, profile. And so now we have both sides of the relationship defined. So whenever we go to query this, we can query a user with a profile or we can query a profile with its attached user. Either way, it works. So there's an example of a one-to-one -one relationship definition within Adonis.js. On one side, we have a has one 
And then on the other side, we have a belongs to because this is the side that has the actual referencing of the ID for the relationship. And the way that Adonis is going to look up the ID value here is based off of the relationship definition. So it's going to take the model and it's going to lowercase that and it's going to concatenate that with the primary key of that related model. So in this case, it would be user underscore ID. And that's how it would look up the column definition within the actual database. And the actual column value for our user ID up here is the exact same. It's user underscore ID. So the two match up perfectly. In the case that they didn't, there is that additional option set within this belongs to, has one, has many, and many to many, all of them have it. They do vary differently depending on what type of relationship definition it is, uh, but they all have this additional option set where we could define specific column values in case anything doesn't match up one to one with the default naming structure of Adonis. And again, the best place to find all of the different relationship options is within the documentation. Within the reference, under database, you can scroll on down to decorators where you have all of the different decorators that we have defined here. So if you look at has one, you can see right here, we have our has one example with a profile. If we scroll down, we have all of the different options that we can provide into this. So we have the foreign key, local key, serialize as, and on query callbacks that we can define on this particular relationship. The foreign key and local key are the two different options that you have in this particular relationship definition when it comes to how Donna should look up what particular column it should find for a particular relationship. So you have foreign key for one side of the relationship and local key for the other side of the relationship. So you can define the two different columns that you should use for the relationship lookup there. And then you have serialize as, which changes the actual column name and how it's serialized the same as with the column decorator. And then you also have on query, which allows us to define additional always existing query definitions whenever we go to query the actual column. And this is really powerful and allows us to define specifics if we want to define a relationship specifically for a set type. So say maybe with our many to many relationship with our posts and our topics, if we always wanted our topic to query public posts, we could define that within the on query and it would just always happen anytime that we query our posts from our topic. Cool. So we have one relationship definition done. Let's go ahead and move on to some of the others. How about we do a many to one next? Let's do our user and our role. So let's go back into our user model. And this is another case where we have a specific ID on the user model. Now, despite this being a many to one instead of a one to one, since the ID is still on this model, it's still a belongs to definition. So we can scroll down to the bottom, do at belongs to, provide this a callback to our role model, public role, and the type will be belongs to type of role. So there's one side, let's jump over to our role model. And on this side, since a role can have many users, this would be a has many relationship. So we could do at has many, provide this a callback with the user model, since this is the relating model, do public users has many type of user. And there we go, there's our many to one relationship example done. Now we do have a couple more of those within this project, so let's go ahead and define those out before we move on to many to many. So we also have a post that belongs to many users, so let's go ahead and define that out. So let's jump into our post model here. Again, this is another one where it has that ID on it, so in this case it's going to be belongs to. So we can scroll down to the bottom, do at belongs to, provide that our user model, public user belongs to type of user. Now in this particular use case, whenever we go to add our user onto our posts via querying, it may not make complete sense to us what exactly the user is. So it might make more sense to name this something different, something more meaningful for our relationship name here. So since we actually have the model bound to the relationship, the model is what's going to be used to find that actual column name and the actual name of the relationship, we're free to name whatever we desire. So here, instead of user, we're free to name this something like author if we so wish. And then whenever we go to query that later on, we can use that reference name of author in order to preload our author onto our posts, in which case that might be more meaningful than preloading a user onto a post. Instead, we can preload an author. So you have that option available to you as well. So we can go ahead and give that a save, jump over to the other side. So we have that user side. And over here, our users can have many posts. So this would be a has many. So we do at has many post public posts has many type of, and there we go, there's that relationship definition done. Now on our post, we do have one more additional belongs to, and that's for our state ID. So we can go ahead and define that up as well. So this would be at belongs to state public state belongs to type of state. And we can go ahead and jump into our state model and define that relationship there as well. A state can have many posts. So this would be a at has many post public posts has many type of post. There we go. And now all that that leaves us is our post to topic many to many relationship. So for this specific relationship, we do have this post topic pivot table that we'll want to go through in order to bind this relationship together. And if you remember, there's a specific many to many decorator that allows us to do that without needing to define a specific model for that post user table. So let's jump into our post side first and let's get this defined out. So we have an at many to many 
just like all of the others, we want to define this to the particular model that is bound to on the inverse side of the many to many, skipping over that pivot table. So in this case, it would be our topic. Scroll up a little bit here. This would be public topics, many to many type of topic. So really looks the exact same as all of the others, but whenever it comes to the actual option set, there is a little bit more to it. So let's dive into the documentation set and take a look at it. So you can go back within the reference database, scroll down to the ORM section where decorators is, come over on this page to many to many, and you can see each one of these options here along with a definition. So since there's two different sides to this relationship, you're going to have two different sets of keys that you can define. So you have the foreign, which is one side, and then you have the local, which is the other. So pivot foreign key is going to be one side. Pivot related foreign key is going to be the other. Then you have local key and related key, which are two different sides as well. And if you ever get confused or needed an example, whenever you're looking this up on the fly, you can go within guides, scroll down to the ORM section, go underneath relationships, come over here on the right hand side to many to many, and you'll get an example. So here within the example, you have users and skills bound by a skill user pivot table. If you scroll down just a brief bit, it goes over what each one of these keys represents with that example. So just know that that does exist on the documentation if you ever get confused on which is which there. A great way to bypass all of that is just to use the default naming convention of Adonis because that's what we've done here. And we can just leave this relationship definition as is and everything will work out of the box with no issues. But if you do ever need to provide those in here, just provide a secondary argument of those relationship options and they'll work just fine. There are a couple of additional ones that we haven't covered yet called pivot table. And that's going to be the table name of the actual pivot table. So in our case, it's going Going to be post topic and the way that it'll find that is it just binds two model names together and snake case and that's the default naming convention that we've gone with here so we don't need to find that here but there is an additional one of pivot columns and these are columns that will be included from the pivot table anytime that we query these relationships so in our case we do have one of those we have that sort order and the way that we can find this is via an array and we just need to define the actual column name there to include with it. So if we want that included every single time that we query these two relationships, we want to include that on both sides of that relationship so that it will be automatically included. You can also omit that here and define to include it in any particular one query on the query in itself. So you have the two different options there on how to include those intermediary table columns. In our use case, I'll go ahead and leave it here so that you know that that does exist. So let's go and jump back over to the opposite side here. So we have our post done. Now we need to do our topic side. And this is just going to look the exact same. Everything's just going to be flip flop. So we have our many to many. This will be bound to our post, public posts, many to many type of post. Again, we also have all of those same options available here. Everything's just flip flop value wise. Um, but we do want to define that pivot columns as sort order. So that that's available anytime that we query. And there we have it. So all of our relationship definitions are done. We're good to move on to CRUD work in the next lesson. If you enjoyed this lesson or you learned something new, please consider hitting the like button down below and subscribing for future lessons just like this one. As I just stated, we're going to move on to CRUD work next with our different models, and then we'll move into relationship CRUD work after that. So thanks for sticking around, everybody. I'll see you all in the next one.